ToonGrin.com. Now, this ain't the first time I've reviewed a Filmation movie. I think we all remember the last one I reviewed, right? If the sun can keep shining bright, then why can't I shine too? Yeah, well, you know what? This movie... Ain't no exception to the rules of filmation either. Yeah, this next film, Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night, makes all the same mistakes as its successor, Happily Ever After. And yeah, I said successor because Happily Ever After came out in 1993, while Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night came out in 1987. So let's see if I got this straight. This movie was made in 1987, and yet they kept the formula exactly the same all the way up until 1993 when the company finally went bankrupt. What a bleak year for humanity that must have been, the birthing of some soon-to-be bitter curmudgeon reviewer on the internet and this crap movie? And how sorry do you feel for those kids? Those kids that went up and said, Mom, Dad, you new movie yet? Let's, let's go watch it. And then they had to see this? Yeah! Honestly, instead of seeing this movie, I think I would have preferred a visit from the Crumpus. Yeah. I really get sodomized by the German Sprite over there, then fucking watch this movie again, let alone I wrote a review about it. But, let's see if I can get a few yucks out of you guys. Here it is, Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night. So the movie begins with... I say, what's the ruckus all about? You know, there are no words to describe the level of what the fuck we are in for. I mean, this thing looks like a result of Nigel Thornberry and a bee after a teleporter accident. But this is sadly a main support character. This is Lieutenant Grumby, voiced by Jonathan Smith. You know, Jonesy from Freakazoid. Freakazoid! You Neanderthal Dinny! Oh, and he was in some show about space or something. So Grumby is witness to what I can only describe as the construction of the Psycho Circus. And we have our villain. Not THE villain, just A villain. This is Puppetino, voiced by William Wyndham. You know, Uncle Chuck from Sonic's Adam. Bug malfunction. We'll have to replace it. <laughs> just as you said, you darkness. It's perfect. Oh, and you don't see his boss till the end of this movie, but just listen to his voice. Yes, a perfect spot for the carnival. That's James Earl Jones. Yeah, Lord Vader himself is in this movie. How did Filmation afford him? Let alone get him to actually say yes. I don't know, but let's continue. So somewhere, I'm going to assume it's Italy, given this is Pinocchio after all. So somewhere in Italy, Geppetto prepares for his son Pinocchio's birthday. Surprise! Whoa, 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 hold on. What the fuck is this shit? He's not a puppet? Then how the hell is this even Pinocchio? Oh, this is another unofficial sequel to a Disney movie? Wow, I got no witty retort for that at all, so I'm gonna leave that up to Dan. I am just going to give you the slow, sad head shake of disapproval. Now, make a wish and blow out the candle. I wish... My fairy godmother was here, so I could say thank you. If it weren't for her, I'd still be a puppet. (sighs) 
Yeah, so Pinocchio makes his wish, and lo and behold, the Blue Fairy arrives. And this is the design for the Blue Fairy. God, she looks like a fucking drowning victim or something. She's so bland, lifeless, and uninteresting. Well, as long as she doesn't do anything stupid, we should be f So enough, you need them both when life is rough. But nothing works without love. So let love guide your way. You are free to go and be whatever you may want to be. But when the night surrounds you, remember what I say. Love is the light inside your heart. When you stumble in the dark, if you're lonely, let love shine. There's no deceiving, you'll find out it's all relieving. Love is the light. Oh, God, how long is this tripe? What? Two minutes? Two fucking minutes? But there's no setup, no context, no nothing. I mean, this blue bitch comes out of nowhere, sings, and just leaves. Oh, God. How much more time is left in the movie? Goodbye, brain cells. <laughs> okay, so back to what little summation there is of a plot. The Blue Fairy leaves, and Geppetto, realizing the time, remembers he has a jewelry box that he has to deliver to the mayor. Part of me strongly does wonder how a puppet maker manages to make a gold jewelry box, let alone afford the material to make said jewelry box, but fuck it, we threw out logic a long time ago. So Pinocchio asks if he can take the jewel box to the mayor for his father. Okay, now Geppetto, you know your son is not that bright, so you're really gonna want to think this decision through before you make any rash choice. Yeah, I suppose you are getting old enough to handle some responsibility. Very well, Pinocchio. Oh, boy! Ow! Dick, move! So Pinocchio is off to go and deliver the jewelry box to the mayor for his father. Geppetto does warn Pinocchio to stay away from the psycho circus that came to town because according to Geppetto, it's simply not safe. Well, that sounds like an open invitation to a child's ears. So Pinocchio then comes to a crossroad. No, seriously, an actual crossroad. And he has to decide whether to do as his father told him or betray his father's trust like the little asshole that he is. If only there was a conscience in, in an insectoid form that could, that could be his guide. And just where do you think you're going? Going? Uh, I, I wasn't really going, I was just... Wait a minute, who said that? Hey, down here! You know, I bet I'm going to be doing a lot of drinking this episode. So this is the Jiminy Cricket knockoff. This is G. Willikers, voiced by Don Knotts. See, earlier in the film, Pinocchio showed he carved a wooden bug. Not really too sure what the fuck it's supposed to be because it doesn't look like a cricket, but the Blue Fairy brought it to life as his birthday present. So with that bomb dropped on us, nothing could possibly get any weirder. Step right up, dear friend, step right up. Everyone's a winner in Scalawag's famous three-shell game. And now, to assist me, what? Happy little mouse. We place the mouse under the shell, and all you have to do is keep your eye on the shell with the mouse. That's it, that's it. Keep your eye on that one little shell. A shell that could change your life. Imagine yourself rich behind your wildest dreams. Fire Lord, my flame burns for thee. And we're back from that minor breakdown. And now we got these two characters, Scalawag and Igor. Now it's pronounced Igor. Whatever. They're the supplement for the cat and fox from the original story. And guess what? They are voiced by Ed Asner and Frank Welger. Together again, just like in Happily Ever After. Listen, kid, I think you should know. Bad like me is the way to go. Being nice is just for sex. Being good is a handicap. Now, I know this came out before Happily Ever After, but damn, it's amazing how much it feels like nothing changed. Again, this movie was released in 1987. Happily Ever After was released in 1993. You'd think in a span of six years, Filmation would want to change tactics. This movie cost them $10 million to make, and they only made about $3 million back. 
So I really gotta wonder, how in the hell did they manage to last for six more years after this movie? In between those six years, did they manage to find Curly's gold or something? Also, these two characters are like the bulk and skull of this movie. A fat, lumbering jackass and a scrawny yes-man. However, the only difference is, bulk and skull are actually dimensional characters and have charm. These characters do not. I will, however, provide the appropriate music for them when it suits the situation. To this Sir J. Scalawag at your service. You are... Dizzy. Uh, I mean, Pinocchio. A splendid name. Melodious rolls off the tongue. He's nice name. My colleague, I... Okay, I, I think we all know where this is going. Could we just, could we just skip on over to, to where Pinocchio feels bad about losing the box, please? You did what? I still can't believe it was a fake, Ruby. You should have known it was too good to be true. I wonder if Father will ever forgive me. Oh, incompetence, thy name is Pinocchio. So now that Pinocchio lost the jewel box to Scalawag and Igor, Pinocchio decides that there is only one sane solution. Blow it all up! No, that'd be awesome. Instead, Pinocchio decides to never hurt his father again by running away, thus crushing his father's feelings. Also, he can join the circus. Carnival. Circus, carnival, whatever. And really, circus sounds a lot more cliché, and really this movie is pretty damn cliché. So despite the protest of Willikers, who got trapped under a wicker basket, Bet Jimmy Cricket would have stepped up and bit slapped some sense into Pinocchio's stupid ass. Pinocchio leaves and makes it to the carnival where he sees a puppet show and falls in love with the girl puppet named Twinkle. I'd make a joke about this, but uh, I'm pretty sure we've all been there. Dreaming and dancing, do what makes you happy. Life of romancing, do what makes you happy. No home to go to, no one to hold you. No one There's a caption contest for you, Nero Knights. Let's see what sick things you come up with with this image. Feel free to send it to my email. Hell, matter of fact, if a lot of people get involved, I might make a top 13 video of this just for lols. So after the creepiest puppet show imaginable, Pinocchio meets Puppetino, the keeper of puppets. I'm going back home. I just wish you could come too. Hey! Hey, you! Me? You look a lot like a puppet I saw once. Name was Pistachio. That's Pinocchio. And I'm not a puppet anymore. My fairy godmother turned me into a real boy. Wow, kid. Say that kind of shit in a bar and see what happens. So Pinocchio is tricked by Puppetino as we enter this. Stop when I want you to, just like the rest of my puppets. <laughs> now, if that's not a mind fuck, I really don't know what is. Using his magic, Puppetino turns Pinocchio back into a puppet. Then we focus on Wilker's story to go and find Pinocchio. And really, do we need to see his adventure? Look, I'm not faulting the movie for wanting to develop the side characters. That's a great idea, and I really admire that. But the fact is, they don't. And I mean, let's face it. We all know Wilkers isn't going to fail, otherwise there'd be no movie. So why prolong it? So Cthulhu, with your permission, I'm just gonna skip this senseless shit. Is that cool? <laughs> Okay, so the only thing we really skipped is that Willikers met Grumby and they became friends. But seeing as how that this is Filmation and these are Filmation characters, they're all one note and there will be no development throughout the course of the fucking movie anyways, so you missed nothing. Alright, so Willikers makes it to the carnival, and does he save Pinocchio? Haha, <laughs> what an idea that's completely idiotic. Oh, uh, gosh man, I, uh, Pinocchio... I know. You took your freedom for granted, Pinocchio. And because you did, you lost it. Well... Deus Ex Machina. 
It's that part in Greek storytelling mm. where some character shows up out of the blue to make everything right. Yeah. Well, that's a bust for any of Wilker's development. I mean, he could have saved Pinocchio, maybe become a real bug in the process, but no, instead we need more time for stupid shit like this. Look, Pinocchio finds Scalawag and Igor, and teams up with them to get the jewelry box back from Puppetino who stole it from them. And you know, I really gotta wonder, how's Geppetto handling all this crap? Does he even know Pinocchio is missing? He's gone. Why? Why? Why didn't I break his legs? Oh good, he's fine. The man surprisingly didn't have a heart attack when he noticed his son was gone despite his old age. That's good. Actually, given the shit he's seen, I'm sure this isn't that big of a surprise to him. So Pinocchio along with Scalawag and Igor locate the carnival and then come across this man when they get in. All aboard! Huh? Would you like a ride? No! Pinocchio! You mustn't go! I'm looking for a jewel box. It came in with the carnival. Do, do you know where they went? Why, yes! Come aboard! You know, why don't we just drop the pretenses and give this guy a big black van and a handful of candy? While we're at it, why don't we just throw Pedal Bear in the background? He just shows up and says, Come on, let's go for a ride! I mean, the scene's clearly not creepy enough. And how stupid is Pinocchio? Isn't Stranger Danger like the first lesson you teach kids? I mean, is Pinocchio so stupid that he'll say yes to just about anybody? Uh, I can have fun too? Oh, of course! <laughs> but there's one small thing we ask in return. What's that? When you've finished, you'll have to sign this little agreement. That's all? I'll do that. Of course. So inside what I can only describe as Pedo World, we see thousands of kids dancing in merriment with no adult supervision and getting drunk at their very own Jesus Juice Fountain. There you go! Try this! What is it? Never mind what it is. Just drink it. It'll make you feel great! Are you sure we're supposed whoa, whoa, to? Whoa, Okay, did you guys just see that? Look in the background. Keep your eye on the background. Look at that. The characters just slide off the screen. The animators literally pulled the cell just from the corner off the scene. Wow, now you know you've entered cheap-ass animation territory. Oh man, you know what? I'll give it up. This movie cheaped out way more than Happily Ever After. Happily Ever After didn't do a sliding cell scene. I can tell you that much. All right, now I think this movie needs a pick-me-up, but I think I've held it off long enough and I've built it up a little bit. It's time to meet the big bad. Here he is, James Earl Jones. Now, you must pay the price. Who are you? The Emperor of the Night. You are in my domain now. Sweet Thunder and Judas, will you look at this guy? I mean, god damn, now that's a villain. How is it we went from this monstrosity to, uh, this monstrosity? And you'll never see your prince again! I mean, the Emperor of the Night is the stuff of nightmares. Actually, you know what would be really awesome is if the Emperor of the Night and the Nightmare King from Little Nemo somehow managed to get into a crossover together. You can make it an epic buddy comedy. Call it Double Trouble. Now that, my Nero Knights, would be the tits. So seeing as how the Emperor of the Night was only really introduced within the last five minutes or so of the movie, sadly we don't get to see him do too much. He does kill Puppetino though, and it does look pretty awesome. You what the God, seriously, look at that face they gave him. What the fuck? So the Emperor is defeated by Pinocchio with the power of love. Really, yes, it's pretty much love. Love for his dad. This movie couldn't get any more fucking creepier. So everyone is saved from the Emperor of the Night, and as an added bonus of creepiness, because clearly there isn't enough in this film, that puppet girl Pinocchio fell in love with, she's alive now. Winkle, you're real too. A real little girl. I'm free. And they all live in a backstage room collecting dust because no one in their right mind would ever see this movie. And that was Pinocchio and the Emperor of the Night, and... Yeah, it sucks ass. Well, okay, not entirely. I mean, yes, the animation is terrible, so really, 
filmation standard, though still better than Happily Ever After, I will give it that much. The acting is generally subpar, the storytelling, meh. Overall, this really does meet all the standards of my shit metal. <laughs> It's shoddy as hell animation, it's heinous in its storytelling, it's imbecilic for trying to be a sequel to another Disney movie when it has no right to be, and yeah, it's trash. But I gotta say, that final act is pretty damn good and makes me really want to actually recommend that you guys check it out. The Emperor of the Night is the biggest 180 I have seen in a movie in a long time. Not many movies can be crap for the first two acts and then pull out a killer ending. When this character shows up, everything steps up, and I mean everything. The animation quality steps up, the voice acting, and even a bit of the story. This monster of a villain is beyond awesome and really could even give some of the Disney villains a run for their money. Design-wise, it's spectacular. I mean, he's a big, creepy-looking, demonic motherfucker. I honestly wasn't expecting something like this for a filmation movie, let alone this movie. Dreaming and dancing, do it makes you happy. My friends are do it makes you happy. It's a surprisingly dark concept, and I really do admire the fact that they took that route. That was really clever and creative. I'm even surprised they managed to even get James Earl Jones to voice him. That's shocking how they could even manage to afford the guy, let alone get him to say yes to such a bit role because this character was barely in the movie. Seeing the Emperor of the Night is a really awesome bit of animation, and I'd highly recommend it. Really, this is a Dark Lord that I think anyone could truly want to get behind and support. <laughs> Aw, oh, come on, Cthulhu, I didn't mean anything by it, man! <laughs> uh... I'm Neron Jellison. I think I'm a dead man.